Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to focus on mastering our email inbox. I get more requests for this than just about anything at this point. So I thought we'd do a video addressing this very tactical issue. Most of this series is about more high concept, transformational, life-changing growth aspects of the system. But sometimes you just need to address very tactical, everyday challenges. And email is one of those things that comes up every single day. It does not need to be an overwhelming burden. There are ways to really tame your inbox and get full control over it. So let's just remove this as an issue. It does not need to be a major problem in your life. There are several elements to bringing a systemic approach to managing your email inbox that then integrate to the larger system around it. Remember, we apply systems thinking here and each system such as our email management system is a part of a bigger system, such as our overall life management system or our information flow management system. So we need a system that works as its own little unit, but then also plugs in very efficiently and effectively to the larger system that surrounds it. And we can do that very effectively, both with the pillars, pipelines, and vault system we've been talking about in all the videos up to this point, but really it plugs into any information management system or task and project management system. It doesn't have to be PPV. This approach to email inbox management is very adaptable as long as you have some kind of life system around it in terms of information and managing your actions. This will very effortlessly plug into that. Now these are what I consider the best practices across the board. There are some more unusual and unique things that I do that pertain to my unique circumstances and you may have unique things you need to adapt to your system, that's fine. Always tweak, customize, optimize for your own needs. Okay, getting right into it. The number one most important thing to get control over your inbox is aggressive filtering. Filter, filter, filter. Start off by canceling any subscriptions that are not of high interest or high value. Unsubscribe often, hit that unsubscribe button all the time. We wanna manage the inflow. Before we get to processing what we have in our inbox, we wanna really restrict what's coming in in the first place. You need a high filter bar. Start by canceling subscriptions that are not adding value to your life or to your work. Unsubscribe frequently across the board whenever something drops below the hurdle that you have set for your inbox and set a high hurdle for anything to be worthy of coming into your inbox. Newsletters or non-urgent automated emails. These may be important, but they're not urgent and you don't need to see them the second they come in. Create separate folders and automations all email services have a way to have automations that will automatically assign certain types of emails to a specific designated folder. Now, some email service providers like Superhuman or Hey will have this built in. Others like Gmail or Outlook, all you have to do is create a folder, go into their filter and automation section, and you can say any email coming in that has the word unsubscribe in it, usually these automated emails like newsletters or marketing emails you signed up for will have the word unsubscribe in the bottom. So if you just filter for all emails coming in that have the word unsubscribe, send them to your newsletter folder. And then when you sit down to do some reading, you've got a curated list of newsletters all waiting for you in one folder, ready, unopened. You can then track what you've read and what you haven't read because you didn't glance at it when it first came in your inbox. It just went straight to your newsletter folder. And if you're at a certain level of business, you have a certain level of business incoming, you might get a virtual assistant, you might have other formal screening processes, but you wanna really think about how to create a high bar for what comes in in the first place. Most people right there can cut their email inflow dramatically just by thinking through how to raise the bar and how to filter for anything that's not meeting that high hurdle of being worthy of your inbox. Then another aspect of this filtering process is email should only be used for outside communication, outside of groups that you have frequent interactions with. Any groups that you are routinely interacting with, you should not be communicating by email at all. So internal teams, business teams, clubs, family should all have either a private Slack group or use some kind of chat messaging app not email, email is terrible for this. Email is hard to search later, it's hard to embed and share media. The stacking of emails is not very elegant. Use tools that are better for fluid ongoing communication for the people you regularly communicate with. So create these Slack channels or chat groups or one-on-one -on -one chat setups with the people you're frequently communicating with. Do not rely on email for that. Those other apps are far more efficient, far more manageable, and just better at sharing communication. So remove email from regular communication with people that you are in constant communication with. So what all this is about is getting inbound email to a minimum 
and raising that signal to noise ratio. So what's coming in is actually valuable. You're not wading through lots of junk to get to the important ones. But some emails, of course, is still gonna come in and you want some of that email to come in. How do we manage that? First and foremost, turn off all notifications. You do not reactively jump every time an email hits your inbox and a little light goes off or a message pops up or a sound dings. You do not want to be constantly interrupting your focus on everything else you're doing every time there's a message. Number one rule is turn off all messaging. Set designated times when you go to your inbox and check it. You are not gonna constantly react to every little thing that comes in. Block off maybe two times a day, three times a day. Ideally, you're gonna schedule this in your calendar ahead of time, say from nine to 9.30, from 12 to 12.30, and then at the end of the day, you can have a window in which you go into your inbox and deal with it then and there. In all aspects of our life, across the whole life operating system we've been talking about in this series, we are eliminating this reactive mode where we just react to things coming at us. Instead, we're deliberately and intentionally designing how we spend our time Email is a reality that we have to address, but we're going to do it on our own terms in designated times, and we're gonna batch our responses to email. So we do groups of them at designated times, not each individual one interrupting everything else we're doing, crushing our flow. We need to maintain that ongoing focus when we're doing other tasks. But we do want to keep our inbox clean, clear, and we want to hit inbox zero at least weekly, ideally daily or several times a week, because when we have this overwhelming, endless email inbox just filled. It clutters down our brains. It clutters down our thinking, our ability to actually go in. It becomes a dreaded chore to even go in there. Or you go in there to see the new stuff and then you've got all these old things that distract you and pull you in new directions. And again, pulls you off from the deliberate intentional day that you're trying to set for yourself that we've talked about in previous videos. So you do not want this overwhelming mess in your inbox. Inbox is for new items to address, and then we need to process them and process them quickly and efficiently. So email history is going to go into your archive. Every email system has a form of archiving and you don't wanna just leave it lingering and piling up in the inbox. You wanna process it and one type of processing is to send it to the archive. It's there if you need it. Now, if you know you're never going to need it again, you might as well delete it. Delete is just as easy and fast as archiving. If there's any possibility it might be useful in the future, hit archive. In most email applications, I think almost all of them, you can make it so reply automatically sends the email chain to archive. So merely replying will archive it automatically. Otherwise, there's a keyboard shortcut in every email application to send it to archive. Use that so that when you process it and once you address each email, it's cleared from the inbox. You don't get this overwhelming bloat and this distraction-laden landmine of things to pull you off of track from what you otherwise should be focusing on. So once we get to processing our email, the rule is read once and then act on it. You do not want to open it, read it, oh, I'm gonna come back to this, come back to it later, have to read it again. Even worse, have to read it multiple times after that. If you read it and don't act on it, that means the next time you come back to it, you're going to have to read it again to get updated on it. The biggest waste of time in processing emails is to read it multiple times and have to go through the same thought process over and over again. The rule is to eliminate any redundancy. So if you're going to read an email, you're going to act on it. If you see a headline or that's from a certain person and you know you don't have the time or interest in acting on it now, then don't open it and don't read it. Save it until you do have the time and the willingness to act on it. So when you open it, you read it, now you have an understanding of what it's about, what needs to happen. You strive very hard not to park it again once you've read it once. You need to do some kind of action on it. And that action can take one of several forms. First of all, some people need this message more than others, but there is no obligation to respond to solicitations or pitches. Those can go straight to the archive or they can be deleted if you're not interested in following up. You cannot spend your time replying to everybody who reaches out to you proposing something. If you don't know them at all, if they're just cold outreaches, if it's of interest, perhaps that's up to you. But if it's not of interest, you don't have to ease their feelings. You don't have any obligation to them. They're making a cold pitch, they're used to it, but also they're imposing on your inbox and they're not adding value. So you do not have any reciprocal obligation. Relieve yourself of any guilt or feeling that you owe them something you don't. You owe yourself the time to do the things that you have prioritized for yourself. 
You have to live up to your commitment to yourself first, rather than some cold outreach from someone you don't know who's pursuing their agenda, not your agenda. Then if possible, the quick reply is great. Gets it out of the way, processes it. Now, a lot of people send emails to you without providing sufficient information. It's really rude to do this and don't be that person. So when you reach out to someone, whether you know them or not, provide the necessary information, make it very clear. And at the top, make it obvious what you're reaching out about. If they don't do that, either straight to archive and ignore it, or if it seems like it might be important to you, then reply with one or two sentences explaining you don't have the information you need. Just clarify, I need to know more about this. And if you can guide them on what areas you need to know more about, great. But to the extent possible, you want to master the art of the one to two sentence reply. Most emails can be addressed in a sentence or two. You don't have to elaborate and give every possible angle. I know this is actually a problem I've had in the past and a lesson that I had to learn the hard way. I have an impulse to fully explain and articulate all my thinking on it. And that's usually not the best approach. Most people don't wanna wade through long emails anyway. You wanna send quick, very short and succinct replies. If you can give them the answer they need, great. If you need to tell them to follow up somewhere else, great. If you need to ask them for clarity on what they actually are looking for, great. As long as it sounds like it might be fruitful for you to dig deeper into it, all that's great. But quick answers are great, it processes it, it eliminates it, and then it moves it to the archive. And text expanders are hugely helpful for this as well. These are apps that sit on your computer. You type a few letters and it expands a full paragraph or sentence or whatever that you find yourself writing frequently. So you have a little code of a few characters, it'll unravel and type a sentence or three or more or however much you want. And you can have standard replies to incoming questions or inquiries that you're receiving often have a text expander set up for that. We'll do another video at some point on text expanders. Unfortunately, text expander, the one with the name text expander is the most popular and it's so buggy and non-functional. So avoid that one, but we'll dig deeper at some point into text expanders if that's of interest. And then finally for emails that can't be managed in one or two sentences and can't just be archived, what you wanna do is then direct them to the rest of your overall life operating system or whatever information and task management system you use. And how you process them depends on the type of follow-up that's needed. If it's an action item, if it's something you need to do, then it goes straight to your action items database. If you use the PPV system, if you use any other task management system, Todoist, Things, whatever, it goes straight into your action items with an assigned due date, a DO date, the date you plan to address it or reevaluate whether you want to reschedule it, but it needs to be assigned as an action item with a specific date. We have previous videos on how to assign due dates, DO dates, and how to make everything you plan to do in the future something that's going to actually happen and get done. That's part of the overall PPV system or whatever task management system you use. But if the email requires an action at a later time that you can't do immediately, it goes into your action items database or to-do manager so that it is scheduled in your proper system. It does not sit in your inbox as a separate to-do list. You cannot run two different to-do lists. You have one to-do list and that's in your life operating system or in your task management system. That is your one and only to-do list. If, you're, if an email is causing an action you need to do, it needs to be entered there at the point you're reading it. Once you've entered it there and perhaps copied any information along with the email needed into that action item in your task manager, you can then archive the email. You do not need to keep it. It is locked and loaded in your personal performance system. Similarly, if someone shares with you media that you need to read or watch or consume in some way, it goes into your media vault. If you use our pillars, pipelines and vault system or whatever knowledge management system you use, any email that contains media that you believe is worth spending some time consuming gets programmed and entered into your media management system. Again, we have the vault section of PPV, but there are many systems, whatever you're using, take any incoming media, put it into your proper knowledge management system, then archive the email. The email is now processed. And finally, if the email contains notes or thoughts or ideas that could be valuable in some way later, you enter them in your notes and ideas vault. If you're using our pillars, pipelines and vault system or whatever note capture inbox you use, you transfer the notes or ideas that are contained in the email or any ideas or notes that the email sparks in your own head you enter those into your notes and ideas 
management system, which is part of a knowledge management system. So you put them into your overall system so that you're not leaving them as action or to-do or follow-up items in your email inbox. Once they've been transferred to your notes and ideas database or app or whatever you use for that, you then mark the email as archived. So it's accessible if you need it, but if you're doing this right, you won't need it. It's archived, it's out of the way, your inbox is clean and clear, and you're only gonna to have to look at additional inbox items as new ones come in, because these have all been processed effectively into your action system, into your knowledge management system. Now, in some cases, you might have a longer, more involved email that you need to re-access, or you might be waiting on someone for something else, and then you may need to reconnect with this email. There are two approaches. One, the best way to do it is to take the content of the email and put it into the action item, or the note, or the media save, or the calendar entry. However you're processing the email that has additional follow-up needed into your larger system, into your task management, project management system, or into your knowledge management system, take the contents of the email and put it in that entry with it. Therefore, the information to act and to follow up is contained with the action item, or the note, or the media entry. So that is the best process. Occasionally, you're going to need to come back to certain emails, and in this case, you might wanna set up a follow-up folder. So if need be, you want to have easy access to certain long-form emails that will require a follow-up, then having a follow-up folder is okay and can be helpful in many ways, and that gets it also out of your inbox, removes the clutter, removes the overwhelm, leaves you streamlined and focused and free to move forward rather than linger on all this buildup in your inbox. And if you do create a follow-up folder, then add an item to your weekly review to check and review the follow-up folder. In many cases, those items will have been taken care of without your having to follow up on the folder. So you may need to just remove some of them and move them to archive out of the follow-up folder or your weekly review may remind you that you didn't follow up as you should have, and therefore you can either schedule a new action item or schedule a new entry in your knowledge management system as appropriate. But the weekly review should be called upon here to keep an eye on the follow-up folder and keep that clean and efficient, just like you're doing with your inbox. And that process will work for just about anyone. Those are a comprehensive set of steps and actions and protocols that will keep your email inbox manageable, efficient, informative, and higher value. But remember, if it's taking too long to go through them, then you have too much incoming email. You need to filter, filter, filter. Cut down the incoming flow so that it's a higher value of email coming in. If you need to start over, get a whole new email, start from scratch with a new email, send updates only to the people that you want to continue hearing from, and filter those out so that you don't have this overwhelming flood, this barrage of incoming that you just cannot handle. You need to live up to your obligations to yourself to do the things that you have prioritized in your life, your highest impact, biggest contributions to the world, to your family, to yourself. You need to prioritize that. If you do that, you will be able to give more to the world than if you're just reacting and responding to emails. Because at the end of the day, emails are other people's priority lists. You need to prioritize your own priority list because that's how we give our most to the world. We identify what we value most in the world, what gives us meaning in life, and we set our priorities accordingly, and then we protect the time so that we can give in that way that we have prioritized, that way that we have identified where, according to our values, we can give the most of ourselves to the world. And that is more important than all this busy work that just floods into our inboxes. So we need to set a very high bar on what we're willing to accept in our inbox so that we can do the much more high value work that we have prioritized with our life planning and our life design systems that we've been talking about in the rest of the series. So this video was very practical and tactical. We'll do more of these, but I'm excited about many of them in the pipeline that are much more growth oriented, much more life transformational. So I'm super excited about what we have coming in future videos. If this is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. And please hit like if you found this video valuable. Leave thoughts or questions below or join us in the Notion Life Design course to explore these topics more extensively. That's at notionlifedesign.com. I also write a newsletter on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the free newsletter. The link to the newsletter is also below in the show notes. Thanks for watching, lots more to come.